Welcome guys to another video from Data Solve. Glad you are here. In today's video, we are going to be building a complete data pipeline using tools such as Apache Airflow, DBT, Snowflake, and more. This video is intended to be for data analysts, data engineers, data enthusiasts, BI managers. This video is for you. I hope you stick around right to the end because we're going to be doing a practical where we put all these tools together. So with that said, grab your cup of tea, cup of coffee or preferred beverage of choice and enjoy the video. Let's go. Yes, I do need to promote some of my own services. So I do run a online database consultancy called DataSolve. If you would like to contact me for any reasons, if you would like some consulting or even if, even if to chat about a data related project, you can book me in my calendar. Furthermore, we do have an online meetup. So if you are in the data sphere, like to connect with like minded individuals, I highly recommend checking out this meetup group. So with that said, let's begin on the first service, which is Snowflake. So, Snowflake was originally founded in 2012. The CEO, Sridhar Ras Ramaswamy, I'm totally stuffing that up. But let's look into the background of Snowflake and let's try and understand why it's so successful. So here we can obviously see the financial metrics. One of the key, one of the key indicators standing out being the total customers. 10,249 and product revenue being 829.3. So they are quite successful, you would say. But the question is, why is Snowflake so successful? And my personal opinion is based on their architecture. So they are using what's called a multi clustered shared data architecture. And this is infamous in the cloud. And the layman's explanation for this is everything is decoupled meaning that one element is not relying on the other element. So their cloud, query, and database resources are all decoupled, which means they do not rely on each other. Whereas if you compare that with an on-premise traditional architecture, a shared nothing or a shared disk, these architectures can be problematic due to their reliance or their tightly coupled nature. And I guess the pain point that Snowflake solves is when enterprises or businesses tend to scale up, their hardware requirements become more complex. So to alleviate that technical frustration, everything is migrated to the cloud. Now, that's not to say that the cloud is the be all and end all because not all enterprises can move to the cloud, but Snowflake offers a solution that does provide high speed querying due to its data warehouse architecture, scalability as it is built in the cloud. So obviously machines scale at will and it's concurrency. Being able to run multiple queries at the same time without any slowness as everything is decoupled. So this is basically one of the reasons why Snowflake has received so much success based off its data architecture. So let's move on to the next service, which is DBT standing for data build tool. Basically DBT is considered to be the T in ELT. Now, if you're unaware what that means or you're not aware of that terminology, we will go more in depth later on in this presentation. But for the most part, DBT was founded in 2016 by a man, Tristan Handy. And there are two variations of DBT. The one we'll be using today, DBT Core, which is mainly CLI, Command Line Interface, or DBT Cloud, which is predominantly a user interface obviously costing more money for the end user. DBT is a transformative tool and it more or less aligns to an ELT methodology. But for those of you that are unaware, we'll go through this ETL. So this is a common ETL architecture. So as we can see, the CSV files being ingested into the raw source schema, then being transformed into the staging area and then loaded into the final dimensional model. This is a typical ETL architecture and the dimensional model being a snowflake or star schema. This is where DBT differs. It uses an ELT architecture where we see CSVs ingested into the raw source and then loaded into the target system. In this case, we are using snowflake and then once it's loaded in the target system, then it's transformed. So it's just reversal of operations. It's nothing too major. Having said that, what are some of the features of DBT? 
One of them being version control. So being able to track changes and revert any mistakes that you make to a previous version is always helpful. Automated documentation, this is a very helpful thing and just helpful to keep your workspace organized and for coworkers to read your work. Uh, macros, if you have repetitive actions or sequences, then you can simply create a macro in DBT to automate those procedures. As mentioned, everything is SQL based. Uh, SQL based transformations. There is a feature for dependency management. So you can track where your dimensional tables or you can track your final tables up the chain towards their source. Testing and validation. DBT provides its own testing and validation methods, which we'll run through in the practical. So that's basically DBT. Moving on to the next service, we have Apache Airflow. So Apache Airflow was founded in 2014 by a gentleman, Maxime Buchemin. And effectively, Apache Airflow is an orchestration tool. What is an orchestration tool? In layman terms, it's, it's basically scheduling of tasks. And with Apache Airflow, it is known for its DAGs, directed acyclic graphs. So that's the architecture that it uses. We'll go through, we won't go too much into the technical, you can read this on your own time if you want to learn more about this. And you can run multiple DAGs in parallel. That's the beauty of it. And it has a nice web interface, which we'll see, we'll get our hands dirty in the practical. And we will be downloading our practical repository using GitHub. So it's always nice to know what GitHub is. So GitHub, here are the founders. You can do your research in your own time if you'd like to learn more about these guys. But Effectively, we are looking for version control. GitHub is a nice way to do that and it provides branches. So a quick overview of what a branch is, is if you're in a development team and you're building a feature in your code base, you can branch off the main code base with your feature branch, which doesn't impact the main code base. That's, I guess, an oversimplification, but that's the gist of what branches are. And you can have multiple repositories in GitHub, public or private. That's it for GitHub and everything is going to be containerized using Docker. So Docker was founded in 2013 by Solomon Hikes and we're going to be using it today for deployment. Now, this is all great. All these services are cool, but how do we know how everything fits together? And I've drawn this pretty diagram for you guys. So this is just a very quick overview or diagrammatic instruction of how we're going to build our practical. On the left, we can see the CSVs being ingested by DBT and loaded into our Snowflake JM schema. And then furthermore, transformed into our transform and and analysis model. And then adding to this data pipeline, we're gonna automate things with Airflow. And we're going to be using two DAGs in this use case. So we have the init DAG and the transform and analysis DAG. And as mentioned, this is basically an orchestration tool or an automation tool to, and finally, we're going to containerize this in Docker. So this will be the glue in our project that will hold everything together. So now we've got a bit more of an understanding of how all these services fit together. We've got a high level understanding. Now we are ready to build. Let's go. All right. So please stick around, guys. Maybe freshen up your tea or get your notepad out because we are about to get our hands dirty and get into the practical of this. All right, guys. So before we begin into this project, there are a few prerequisites. Number one, you do need a GitHub account because we will be building from a repo. Number two, you will need a Snowflake account. Number three, you will need an IDE. We are using Visual Studio Code in this example. Number four, you will be requiring Docker desktop. So once you've installed all those things or you've acquired all the accounts, you should be ready to go to the next step. So once you've got your GitHub account, what we'll do is we will be cloning from a repo. I'm going to give some credit to Jacob Manol because I forked his original repo and I tweaked it. Some enhancements in the Docker image. All right, go ahead and fire up your Visual Studio. So what we'll do is we're just going to 
open the demo here, select folder, open your terminal, and what we'll do is we're going to clone, click on code here, copy to there, just type in the commands git, clone, and paste, enter. All right, so now what we should have is we should have a directory with our dbt and our docker. Now, bear in mind, you will need to run these Snowflake setup commands prior to starting this exercise. And if you do note in the profiles, you do need to configure this profile section, include your account, your database name, so we'll just go through a few high level details here. So in the dbt subfolder, we can see seeds, which is the CSV files. Um, the most important file here, one of the most important dbt files here is this yaml file, .yml. And yaml is just the structure of file. And this dbt project yaml details to the compiler effectively all the necessary details to send through to Snowflake. And then these, under these models here, this is the main bulk of where the data transformation lies. Just quickly show you the DAGs. So this is the part, this is the automated part. And I guess if I, if I set your eyes to line number 20, we can see here, this is the automated, I mean, in a production environment, you probably wouldn't automate this, but this, this basically will seed from the profiles directory, which is basically just creating the dummy data. And then we, a second DAG we have here is we're actually running a model, which is in, a, in layman terms, we are creating a transformation, which is this runs the transform and this runs the analysis. So we are running these two models. Uh, once we run this, we'll, we'll have a look in Snowflake what it looks like. Now, how do we build this? So what we need to do initially is we need to build the Docker image. First off, we need to change to the directory of where the, of where the Docker Compose file is. So change directory, airflow. Okay, so now we're in the directory. So now we can build the Docker file. And what this is effectively doing is it's building everything we specify in this compose, Docker Compose YAML. Now, if you're not familiar with this, it can be a bit overwhelming, but effectively we're just building, it's just a configuration file in effect. It's very important that we get these volumes correct, the directories or else the automation won't work. And we also run this Docker file, which this will install the requirements, it'll install dbt core and dbt snowflake on our machines. Once we've done that, then we can uh, turn our machine on with this command docker compose up. And this will bring our machine to life. Okay, so this is the docker desktop. We should see some life here somewhere. If you ever need to log into your docker containers, this is the command to do so. So docker ps. This will give you basically a list of all the machines that are online now. So if you want to log into a web server, we just need to copy this and I'm going to put it into this command here. So this is the command here to log into the web server. So now we are in the web server and we can see now this is actually the dbt folder of where the DAGs will run. So if we change direction, change directory, sorry. So this is, this is one folder above where the directory, where the working directory is. This is the DAGs folder, dbt, and that's the requirements text from which we installed all our Python packages. That's just a bit of a troubleshooting side tangent, but let's have a look at what Airflow is looking like at the moment. So here are all our machines. So we need to jump into the web server so if we open that, now the username by default is Airflow and the password by default is Airflow. So we sign into that and we can ignore all these, we can ignore all these extra DAGs. We're just focused on one and two. So what we want to do is we want to 
This is the initial once seed data. So we can run that. All right, so we can see that that's been a success. So I, I had already previously run this DAG, so I, I already have a populated database, but this is effectively my Snowflake now. As we can see here, it's carried across the source data. Now, if we run our second DAG, this is where we create our models and our transformations. This is the bulk of the transformations. All right, and that looks like it has succeeded as well. If we now look into our transform database, we can see the views here, combined booking and customer. Uh, mind you, I'd already run this before, so this is pre-populated, something I prepared earlier. But that's effectively it, guys. That's effectively the project. So if you want to replicate that, you can clone this into your local and you can play around with this and, and see if you can get this working. We modify this or this is... This is a good learning tool so you can get a deeper understanding of DBT and how it functions with Airflow and how uh, the process of automation works. Guys, I'd love to hear your feedback. If you have any comments, it would uh, mean a lot to me and it would help out my channel and help grow my channel. So thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.